Rub up your engines! People have always been modifying their cars. Some of these modifications are legal in some states, illegal in others. Now the first modification has to do with removing mufflers from a car. Now when your engine's running, it burns gasoline. The exhaust comes out the exhaust manifold, goes down the pipes, the back of the car. Then it passes through the catalytic converter where unburned hydrocarbons are burned. Then it goes further down through the muffler. And in my own silica, there's the muffler here. It tried in the back. That's the original muffler of this car too, it's amazing. Now like most car parts, the muffler is named for what it does. It muffles sounds. The loud noise of the engine explosions go through various baffles that it hits, which quiets it down, then it comes out the back. But mufflers, besides muffling sound, they also create some back pressure, some resistance to your exhaust gas freely flowing out so your engine can breathe in and breathe out as fast as possible. Realize that basically your car's engine is a giant air pump. It's sucking as much air as it can and it's pumping the burned gases out as fast as it can to be more efficient, to run faster, and to just work better. To some extent a muffler does reduce the power of your vehicle. That's why you don't see mufflers on race cars. And of course it's why race cars make so much noise. Now it used to be at all the piston airplanes. They didn't have mufflers either. That's why when you hear them flying overhead you can hear Rawr. Well in Europe now they've made very stringent noise regulations for small airplanes with propellers and even they are starting to have small mufflers that have less baffles on them, they reduce the noise a little, but they also reduce the power. So if you remove the muffler, you will have a freer flowing engine exhaust, which means it can suck air in better, burn it, and throw the waste gas out as efficiently as possible. But in doing so, you're often breaking the law. But the law is different in all states. For example, in California, a vehicle can't make more than 95 decibels. In New York State, the limit is 15 decibels. You guess you could have a louder car in California legally than you can in New York State. While here in Texas, there is no actual decibel limit. It just says that your vehicle can't make excessive or unusual noises. Leaves things kind of open there. What is excessive? And certainly, what is unusual? I guess you can't have a car that honks like a goose. <laughs> but that leaves a lot of parameters. I hear a lot of loud cars around here. Nobody seems to bother them. And lately I've seen a lot of really loud Ferraris and Porsches in my neighborhood as it's becoming yuppified. A lot of them backfire because they don't have them tuned up right and they rub them up high and they're shifting and they backfire. A car should not backfire. If you do take a muffler off of your vehicle, you got to make sure that that thing is tuned up and running perfectly, set perfectly, because if it isn't, you're going to get a bunch of backfires. The muffler will also slow down some backfiring. I mean, if you got a big gas leak inside the fuel injectors and it's dumping raw fuel in the exhaust, it's going to backfire then too. But a normally running engine, if it isn't perfectly set up without a muffler, they do have a tendency to backfire more. So if you just remove a muffler and your car isn't set up right for that flow, it may not run right. And of course, since it's illegal in most places because of the noise it's going to make, they're all going to make too much noise on a regular gasoline engine. They make a lot of noise if you take the muffler off. Your whole system's based on oxygen sensors, catalytic converters, and if you remove the muffler, then you're going to have a higher flow, and that can often mess with the software and the readings from the oxygen sensors and the working of the catalytic converter, because the catalytic converter actually has to store a little oxygen inside to burn the hydrocarbons, and if it's flowing too fast, it can't store anything, and it won't work right. So then you'd be breaking the pollution laws. Now I've had people in the past say, "Hey, Scott." you got to have a muffler on your car because you need that back pressure. Well, if you're driving a four-stroke engine, that's not true. You don't need any back pressure. They're not made to need back pressure. But speaking of back, back in the past, when I was a young mechanic, there were a lot of two-stroke motorcycles. There were really even two-stroke cars like the Saab Sonnet that was a bizarre V4 two-stroke engine that the Swedes made. Now because of the difference in a two-stroke engine versus a four-stroke, the two-stroke engines really need 
a certain type of pressure in their exhaust system. In the motorcycles, they call them expansion chambers. If you look at one of those old 60s or early 70s two-stroke motorcycles, you see they have these big expansion chambers on the exhaust. That was so that they would create a certain amount of pressure so the two-stroke engine could run right, because two-stroke engines are completely different. They don't have the four-stroke of the intake, compression, ignition, exhaust. They're just two, and they're gas mingles in the engine as it runs that's one reason they pollute a lot more but with those you take off the exhaust system of a two-stroke motorcycle engine it'll run like crap but that has absolutely no bearing on a four-stroke modern car take off the muffler yep you can make it go faster if you tune it up right but you will be breaking all kinds of laws and here in the united states especially you'd be breaking federal pollution laws because if you did it and someone tested it on a machine they probably find out that's putting out more pollution than it should because getting rid of that back pressure changed how the anti-pollution system worked so now theoretically catalytic converters can last forever they're called catalytic converters because they have a catalyst in it often it's platinum exotic metals it will burn the on burn hydrocarbons so none of it comes out the exhaust in the back of your car. And as long as that catalytic converter is built correctly and your engine doesn't throw burnt oil, burnt coolant in it to clog it all up, they can actually last forever. That's the point of a catalyst. But of course, that's in a perfect world. Hey, we don't live in a perfect world, that's for sure. Here's how they break down and how you can tell if it's broken down before you just throw money out on one and it doesn't fix your problem. Now, one way to certainly tell it's bad is if they start rattling. You can hear this rattle when it's running, especially in auto, you can hear it rattling. Odds are the inside have broken down like this one. When you look inside, you can see the substrate inside has broken down. There's the honeycomb, the platinum's inside that. It's supposed to be so the air flows and when it breaks and they come apart, you know they're broken. Now, unless you make a point of always whacking over speed bumps and hitting the exhaust system, that's generally a manufacturing flaw. They didn't build them right in the first place. Years ago, that was a notorious problem with many Volvos. They'd have the rattling converter. Lately, a lot of minis, you get rattling converters, and you know they're going bad. They shouldn't make any noise at all. Now, I have had customers drive them for years when they're just rattling. If they're just rattling and you don't get the code for inefficient catalytic converter and your check engine light comes on, sometimes you can drive them years that way if you don't mind the noise. But in the case of this Lexus catalytic converter, you can see the inside broke and when it would go sideways, the air can't flow right. It's supposed to flow through the little honeycomb holes inside, but when it goes sideways, it blocks the flow of the exhaust coming out the back. And when that's the case, you generally get two problems. If it blocks the flow of the exhaust, put your hand on the exhaust, you'll see hardly anything comes out. That is gonna make your car only be able to go to a certain speed because your car's gotta suck air in the front and then throw the exhaust out the back. And if it's sucking in but it can't throw out, guess what? The engine can only go to a certain speed and that muffled exhaust is going to make it go slower. A lot of times you have a car that can only go 45, 50 miles an hour and no faster. Or in extreme cases when they're really clogged up, I've seen them where they wouldn't go 20 miles an hour. Now any mechanic worth their salt can easily test it. We just have pressure gauges and you can take out the oxygen sensor in front of the catalytic converter. And if you find that it's got five, six, seven, eight or more pounds per square inch pressure, that means that something is building up the pressure before the catalytic converter. You'd know that if the cat's clogged, the pressure in front of it's going to go too high. It normally shouldn't be more than maybe a pound, pound and a half tops. You got five, six, seven, eight pounds or more, that's clogged up. But sometimes the fix is worse than that because I've seen it. And in the case of the Lexus one that I just showed you recently, the catalytic converter was bad, but it broke and pieces went through and also clogged up the muffler. So the muffler had to be replaced too. Never assume there's only one problem. I got that years ago from my father when I was a teenager, learned to work on cars. He said, don't tell somebody you can fix their flat in five minutes. Cause hey, maybe it's got a nail and you can fix it in five minutes. What if it has two or three nails? You know, it's gonna take a lot longer. You always have to check everything. So just because one part's bad, it doesn't mean that down the line there aren't other parts that are bad. And nowadays, of course, it can be more complicated cause some of the cars have a catalytic converter built into the exhaust manifold that cost a fortune and that's the first catalytic converter then there's another one further down the line so you can actually have more than one go bad i even had a car that had the front catalytic converter go bad 
the medium catalytic converter go bad and the muffler they all clogged up one at a time that was one expensive fix now a lot of poor mechanics they'll see a code on a scan tool that says inefficient catalytic converter and they'll immediately say well you need a new catalytic converter that's not always the case it can be inefficient for many reasons you could have a bad oxygen sensor either before the cat or after the cat if it's given bad information it's going to say the cat's bad when the cat is okay and of course the sensors cost a lot less than the whole catalytic converter you could have an engine that has something as simple as a vacuum leak the vacuum leak sucks air makes the car run lean then if the oxygen sensors see lean all the time they might think the catalytic converter's gone bad when it has nothing to do with it over the years i have seen scores of people who paid for expensive catalytic converters and that didn't fix their problem yes they can go bad but they have to be tested thoroughly before you just slap on one of those expensive catalytic converters and when it comes to the converters themselves of course people want to save money when they buy it but sometimes the aftermarket converters won't work on a particular vehicle they'll fit but they won't work correctly with the anti-pollution system the sensors on that car and they'll continue to trip codes even though they're new when they're on there. Now a lot of that, from what I see, has to do with cheapness. I've seen catalytic converters, the factory ones that were real big and thick, and the replacement ones were tiny little things. Well, of course, inside, they're gonna have less stratus for the air to go through when the exhaust goes through, and less platinum or metals that they use to burn the on-burn hydrocarbons. So, of course, they're not gonna work as efficiently. One company that I find that's extremely sensitive for this is late model Infinities. They often have bad catalytic converters. And I have had customers, they went out and they bought aftermarket ones online. And I put them on, they fit perfectly fine. But originally they had a code of inefficient catalytic converter. 150, 160,000 miles, so yeah, yeah, I can see that. Especially in an engine that burns oil. When I put those aftermarket ones on, still had the same code. They were smaller, cheaper made, and they didn't work. In the case of Infinities, I tell people, you have to buy the OEM cats. There's no way past it. So basically, how do you keep your cats from going bad? Well, don't do stupid things like this is spray silicone. Never spray this around the air intake because if silicone gets sucked into the engine and burned, the silicone can ruin the oxygen sensors and the catalytic converters. Even some guys, they'll make gaskets out of silicone on intakes and the fumes getting sucked in. That can also ruin them. You don't want to use silicone spray and you don't want to use any kind of self-sealing silicone gasket maker on anything on the intake where it's going to be sucked into the engine. And you want to take care of your engine. Change your oil regularly. Change the coolant regularly. Because if you have an engine that's burning either oil or coolant, the after effects of burning them can clog up the catalytic converter. It takes time, but it will do it and especially burning oil the cars i see that fail an emissions test and somebody puts a cat on and then next year they fail again but they passed in between it was often because the engines burned oil and as the engine burned oil that burnt oil would cover up the catalytic converter and it wouldn't work anymore now if you do have a catalytic converter that's starting to go out sometimes cleaners work there's stuff like cataclean a lot of chemicals that people sell but from my own personal experience i use this lacquer thinner that the automotive paint stores sell and you put a gallon of that to every five to ten gallons of gasoline in your car it's better to do it with at least nine gallons of gasoline in your tank because then you have about a ten percent ratio of cleaner to gasoline and really when you think about it the gas you're buying in a pump already has well they changed the law so now it's like fifteen percent or more ethanol in it so it's not like it's going to damage anything in the short run some people whine other people say oh great it worked for me and yes it can work work but realize it is a cleaning solution if there's too much crud nothing is going to clean that crud off other than replacing the catalytic converter let's say you got a car that won't go over 15 miles an hour because it's clogged up cleaner is going to fix that i've never seen cleaner fix a car like that but i've seen cleaner fix hundreds of cars that had the inefficient catalytic converter coat they'd run a gallon to nine gallons of gas on the gas tank drive it till they're almost out of gas then when they took it in and tested it, it passed the test and the light didn't come on anymore. When they're starting to go, cleaner can work. And if you're actually into serious work on your car, a guy who sold catalytic converters actually told me this one. He showed me that if you take the catalytic converter off, soak it in soapy water overnight, which loosens everything up, then you air dry it with compressed air and put it back on, that actually works best of all, but many catalytic converters are welded on. Like I said, some of them are in the exhaust manifolds, so cleaning them 
mechanically is almost an impossible thing to do. But it actually works the best. Crazily enough, soapy water soaking in them can break a lot of the crud off of those little holes and then they work again. Now people are always asking me, Scotty, what exactly does a catalytic converter do on your car? What purpose does it have? Well, it only has one purpose, and that's to burn unburned hydrocarbons to slow down pollution. Any car that doesn't have a catalytic converter will actually run slightly better than one that has one because it's somewhat of a restriction and it heats things up because the way it burns the unburned hydrocarbons is by getting really hot. So if you took one off a car, of course it would actually run better, but it's against federal law to do it. So <laughs> you're breaking federal law if you decide to take your catalytic converter off of your car. And if you buy the right car with a CAD is solid built and maintain it, like my 94 Celica, it's still got the original catalytic converter on it, 25 years old. So they can last a really long time if you maintain them and buy the right car. That said, don't buy an Infiniti, a Nissan, uh, a Mini, because they're notorious for not even building right in the first place and they go bad as they age and are very expensive to repair, especially the Mini. Now another way, legal and illegal at the same time, using nitrous oxide to boost the power of an engine. There's all kinds of nitrous setups. There's wet ones where it comes in wet, mixed with the fuel. There's dry ones where it comes in by itself but basically they're all made to boost the power of your engine you can make a little bitty four-cylinder engine put out 40 50 more horsepower you get a big old v8 engine hey, you can end up adding hundreds of horsepower to it their legality is kind of in no man's land depending upon where you live i got friends in australia they said new south wales it's totally illegal you can't have a nitrous oxide system on your car for street driving. Where in Great Britain, there's no restriction on using these nitrous oxide systems other than you have to tell your insurance company they're gonna jack up your insurance rates because they know you're making it a faster car. Where in South Carolina in the United States, you can legally have a nitrous oxide system on your vehicle, but you can't have the tank opened to use the system while you're driving on the street. They have it so you can have it on your car and you can take your car to a racetrack and do it or go on a dirt road and do it, but on legal streets that you're driving, you can't have the tank opened up. And since if the tank's closed, it doesn't put any boost, you're not boosting anything. Which of course leads to guys hiding tanks and hiding the whole system so nobody can see it. But in the state of Nebraska, it's completely legal. You can have it on a streetcar and if you get pulled over for speeding, you'll get a speeding ticket, but they will not give you an extra ticket for having a nitrous oxide system hooked up to the car. I mean, nitrous oxide works. <laughs> it uses an oxidizer and rocket engine. So I mean, this stuff does work of course there's only a limited amount you can have it doesn't last all that long but when you do open it up and inject it into the system Woof. Now, of course, in the long run, it will have detrimental effects on your engine. When I was young, a lot of guys put them in, and they were always blowing their engines. They'd blow the head gaskets. Sometimes they'd even blow the heads. Each engine is designed to accept a certain amount of power, and if you go over that limit, it will blow up. That's just the way that it goes. Now, the last modifications I'm going to talk about can be illegal, but they can really make your vehicle go faster, is the use of larger higher flowing fuel injectors on your engine. The fuel injectors on your car, the four here, they're designed to get the maximum amount of both fuel economy and power for a certain size engine. So if you put in fuel injectors that have a higher flow rate, now you'll probably have to put a bigger fuel pump on it too to pump the extra fuel. You can get more fuel into the engine quicker and it can increase the power that it puts out. Now, the main reason that this would be illegal is because it's drastically gonna change the pollution coming out the tailpipe. Unless you had a complete pro who knew how to reprogram your computer and set it up so that it wasn't polluting more. If you put bigger injectors on, and set the car up to run with those bigger injectors. And of course, you're gonna get a worse gas mods because you pump more fuel in. But if you really wanted to do something like that, they make various injectors for various cars and you would have to have to find a mechanic or if you're a real computer whiz and knew how to program computers and understand air fuel ratios, you could try to reprogram your computer so that it would accept these new injectors. Now, if you've got a common car out there like a Mustang or a Camaro or Dodge Charger, there's lots of guys that do that kind of stuff. You can go on the internet, you can see their advice, tell you what to do. And I know with my old Triumph motorcycle, it's fuel injected too. There's a British site that 
the guy gives away all the information free. So you just hook up the scan tool. He gives you the information of how you should reprogram certain aspects of the computer software to make those bigger injectors work, and away you go. There's a lot of guys out there that are into speed, love sharing their information with everyone else. But then again, realize these guys are going for speed. A lot of times you do something like that, it's not gonna pass any pollution tests. For example, on my Triumph motorcycle here in Texas, they don't test motorcycles for pollution when they're inspected each year. So it's not like you got to worry that it's going to make an emissions test because they don't emission test motorcycles here in Texas. So ultimately, if you're going to do any of these modifications, you want to check with your local laws and see how things work in your area. But if you find that a certain thing is legal in your area or it's not illegal, go ahead. Just realize as the saying goes, speed. It's just a question of money. How fast do you want to go? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.